Thank you for the organizing committee to actually, uh, for the invitation. I'm actually not a physician, so I want you to know that. So um, let's see here. However, innovation is my, uh, is my life. Um, senior director at the Cleveland Clinic Innovations, and I'm here to give you a different vignette about what's out there when it comes to vascular diseases. So when first I was given this talk and eight minutes to do this, it was really my, my thought, total panic. How can I summarize things that are tons of stuff out there in eight minutes? And I thought about it as maybe my job security here. So I'll start this year and I'll continue next year. So available therapy solutions, um, medical therapy, physical activities, lifestyle changes, revascularization, cell and gene therapy. My focus today will be more into revasc and cell and gene therapy. <clears throat> So suggested frameworks, just to give us a little bit of uh, structure here, there are different tools that we see in vascularization, there are tools in imaging, and also in different indications. Innovation span spans across all of these three um, uh, field triads. For me, what I'm gonna be focusing on are these uh, stand struck coated balloons, some energy-based devices, and um, <clears throat> can get started. So with stands, there's minimal changes in stent development for PAD. Everybody is, knows the Supera stent, I think has great performance. People have been using it. Some very good clinical results have been shown in this, uh, in this uh, meeting. People talk about uh, stenting or DCB. So there's a lot of discussions around that. We'll see how that will pan out. When it comes to bioresorbable stents, um, new technology, there's strong technical challenges remaining to achieve anything that actually close, come close to any DES. Um, I think we will not see anything fairly uh, soon and will be emerging maybe uh, in the distant future at, at this time. Um, just to put in there the carotid stenting, obviously the, the stents are remain the same, but the technology around um, protecting the, the brain is very uh, much well um, uh, uh, established, or actually with the with um, uh, the the roaster uh, clinical trial with Silk Road Company, I was trying to find the name of the company. They have already already shown that that percutaneously they can have a very good device that actually um, uh, cha or not challenges or um, becomes very uh, equal to, to to what what is done today on the surgical side. My biggest. Uh, topic that I'd like to, to, to address and, and, and discuss is really drug-coated balloon. <clears throat> drug-coated balloons, we see them uh, a lot. There's a lot of discussions about the efficacy of Pachytaxel and CLI. We don't know that yet, a lot of good research, whether it's actually in the clinical side or on the technical side. The impacts of new entrants, Stellarax, Rheumatics with, the, with Serolimus, we don't know how will that change actually the uh, efficacy in, in CLI. <clears throat> the discussion between Pachytaxel and Serolimus is prominent. How would that actually change also the field, whether it's above the knee or below the knee, and whether people will, sw will switch to Serolimus or not. <clears throat> At this time, we don't know the safety, the efficacy, so what is good for the patient? Obviously, uh, Pachytaxel is working very well, but at the same time, <clears throat> we're not sure how Serolimus will come in. Some new entrant, entrants as well, three different companies, MetaLiance, with microparticles, concept medical with some organic <clears throat> nanoparticles, and then a new entrant advanced nanotherapies. And with that, <coughs> I apologize. So with that, um, we don't know how Pachytaxel and Serolimus will actually be uh, coming in into these uh, uh, new technologies. <coughs> so a couple of new emergent technologies in, uh, in energy base. So one, we have SoundBite. This is a technology that can, oh, thank you so much. This is um, a very cool technology that I've been involved with as well. It actually provides a uh, different crossing of, uh, of different lesions in a very short period of time. Uh, this is a technology from Montreal, and they have been able to cross long lesion for a very short period of time, seven minutes here. They're doing first animals, uh, f first human in peripheral, and we're looking forward to their studies as well. This is uh, another technology you can see here uh, for flow bypass. The first, uh, the first case was done in Ohio by Dr. Shobor. We're very proud to, to see the diff different technology that are, that are brought up to, to our region. 
you see that here some, uh, some of the clinical results that have been uh, achieved with, with this technology. You see here, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a technology that I get very excited about because it's a technology that, has, uh, that is addressing people that have no options, so patients with no options. And you can see the outcome of this technology after multiple uh, six months and 12 months is a very positive for for patients that really doesn't have any other, they don't have any other therapies. Here are some of the recent data that they shared with me. As you can see, they addressed the most, uh, the, the, the most needy patients, and then the results associated with this has been very stellar. Plaque modifications, I have two, two types of, um, two types of, pla of, of devices. Plaque scoring, uh, you can see some devices in there, and then plaques excising. In here, I, will ha I want to highlight flex scoring, flex dynamic scoring, which is a new uh, device. It's still actually in investigation. What I like about this is the ability to have, uh, uh, so what they do, they actually score the plaque, which uh, in, 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 their, in their terms and in, in their uh, clinical studies have shown that they can actually establish a lower balloon uh, pressure when it comes to opening arteries. Maybe this could be safer for, for artery, uh, arteries during uh, DCB or just PTA devices. When it comes to gene uh, therapy, uh, very little actually is, is, is gone in there. Uh, there's a, there's a, uh, a, a, a company from the Cleveland Clinic, and then the main PI was Dr. Shishabor here, who has uh, uh, led, the, led basically the study around the STOP PAD trial. In here, as you can see, there is no differentiation between the placebo and different uh, and different uh, dosage. This uh, results; these results have been actually shown uh, and presented, and this basically trial has 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 failed, and the company has uh, has default uh, has folded basically. This is a an interesting technology that we we came across from Ohio State University. This is actually reprogramming the cells. And what I get excited about this, because they're taking skin cells, they're putting something into, into them, and then they reprogram, reprogram, reprogram them to be uh, basically um, uh, new vessels. So they use electroporation to put in their cargo in the, in the cells. And you can see in here how the cargo is being delivered into the cell through these nano uh, channels that they've created with, with needles. In some of their experimentation that I have shown here in the control, where they have severed the, the femoral artery in the, control, in the control, and then after uh, 14 days, you can see that the, the limb here is fairly necrosed. What they have done here is the same thing where they have uh, closed the femoral artery, but then after three days, they have actually injected in there this, uh, what they call TNT. So these uh, cocktail of genes, and you can see the limb is actually pretty much healthy, and then here we're just little necrosis. This is a very interesting technology. It's very early. Uh, we won't see it in the we won't see it in, in, in prime time in the next few years. But uh, their only problem is the depth of the angiogenesis is fairly fairly small. Last one. This is uh, uh, augmented reality in imaging. Uh, it's very it's here. I think it's going to come to uh, to uh, to your practice. And I just want to show you a little bit of what's done here. This is for. And see how the restoration is very good. Uh, the physician can see very nicely what the, 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 the structure is. And let's see here. So with that, you've got also other information that are uh, put on top of these, uh, uh, of these arteries or these uh, imaging. And you can do your entire procedure uh, using augmented reality than actually under fluoroscopy. And then next here, you'll see how they can do deployment of different devices. In this particular case, they've deployed a stent here. So you can see that the entire procedure was done uh, and their uh, augmented reality, which is uh, very interesting for the future. So in conclusion, unmet clinical needs are still present and patient needs further therapy. I think we know that. We need more devices, more solutions. Innovation is healthy, but also we need to answer some basic clinical questions through randomized clinical trials. So. Uh, impact of improved imaging could yield new treatment modalities. So obviously this uh, augmented reality stuff is, is here. It will be here, um, very, very sure of it. And for gene therapy, still struggling, struggling to, be, to find its efficacy in PAD, but some new technologies are promising, and hopefully they will be adopted within our uh, hands. Thank you so much.